What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Bruja Africana. Yo, so y'all ready for another Orisha story? This time it's going to include a Bakhtali Eshu and Ogun. Do y'all want to know about the time that uh, a Bakhtali got betrayed? And child, it is just as messy and just as disgusting as it is. A uh, true story if you are a follower of the Faith E5. You know, just, 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 just listen and have a chuckle. But for us, y'all, this is some good old messy bullshit, okay? So, back in the day, you know, when Abatala lived with his wife, uh, Yamoa, in Ile Ife, and they had children, they had their two children, okay? And his two children was Eshu, which Eshu was the baby, and Ogun was the oldest. So, like most Orishas, or not most, let me, let me take that back. Like a lot of the Irimole and some of the Orishas... Abatala too was a Babalao. He did his thing and that's how he made his money. Um, for a present day setting, let's say that they're in Missouri as well. Don't know why I'm going back home to Missouri for this one, but shout out to you if you're from Missouri. Anyway, they settle in Missouri and that's where he does his business. But sometimes, let's say he may live in northern Missouri and he has to travel to no um, southern Missouri for most of his business. Maybe he travels to Illinois and Indiana as well. Let's say he travels around the Midwest doing his thing as a Babylon. And he leaves sometimes for three months at a time. And he counts on... Um, sorry, y'all. Uh, I had to pause for a second. Where did I leave off at? Oh, about the lot leaving his wife, Yimowo, and his two children, Ogun and Eshu, at home sometimes because he has to travel. Where did I leave off at? I was saying, okay, boom, they live in northern uh, Missouri, but maybe he travels to southern Missouri so that he can do his business or he covers the Midwest. He's a Babylon doing his thing, you know, blessing his people. So on one particular trip... After he had been back home for a while, you know, he's off the road. Basically, if you say he was uh, on tour, he's off tour now. He's at home with the family and he's been there for more than 90 days. Maybe he's been at home for about five months. That's just how well his business was doing. Well, he gets a message one day that he needs to come urgently. Let's say he has to come urgently to Illinois because his people need him. Um, by then, as you had become... A daddy's boy he was clinging on to his daddy in this specific story um remember we're talking about a bottle in this story not a room i know i just left off with a story of a room being Ashu's father but remember there are different versions of the orisha so baby follow me okay follow me because this pot is cooking because it's about to get real juicy anyway so Eshu clinging to his pops. He's like, I don't want you to go, you know, doing that shit the babies do. Not babies. I'm going to just say, you know, Eshu was probably like four. I don't want you to go, you know, crying because his daddy got to go. He's a daddy's boy. And that's cute. If you Shout out to you if you're a father and your sons are, are so close to you that they that you are this little guy's king. Okay. I love to fucking see it. Okay. Salute you, sir. Anyway, that's how Eshu looking at, at, at his daddy, you know, or at least this is how Batala only perceives it. So he gives him a hug and a kiss and lets him know he's about to dip out. He go fuck on his wife and, and kiss her, tell her I'm about to get out of here. And, and he go to his oldest son, Ogun, and, you know, dap him up like a grown nigga because Ogun like 15. So he like, you know. I'm about to be gone for a while. You know, you the man of the house. I'll be back. I got to go take care of my people. Okay, boom. This is the over. This this is a recurring thing that they do, or that occurs when a bottle is getting ready to step out, go do his thing, get his money. You know, and then come on back home. Well, Ogun with his nasty ass and. No disrespect to you if Ogun is your father, but baby, your father, who baby, he is Ogun, is, is Ojogun to his motherfucking core. What is that? I might not even be pronouncing this shit right, baby, but he is one of them darker energy Orishas, honey. Because, baby, whatever man he wants, baby, he's gonna get by any motherfucking means necessary. He don't give a fuck who the fuck toes he step on, okay? So his daddy gone. Or before his daddy leaves, excuse me. Oguna sat up and formulated a motherfucking plan. He sat back rubbing his motherfucking hands together like motherfucking 
bird man, big ass hands and shit rubbing them together, sitting up thinking and plotting on his mama's ass, y'all, his blood mother, like the bitch that shat him out. And you'll see why I'm talking about her like this in a minute. But he, he sitting up plotting on her. Before his pops leave, you know, a couple weeks ago, you know, leading up to this, he been checking shorty out like, man, my mom's looking kind of aight. Like, nigga, instead of taking your big nasty ass out and going to find you a little bitch to fuck on, you know, no disrespect to, you know, my sisters that are on my Oshun, babe, but Oshun was fast. You couldn't go get that ass from Oshun because she'd have definitely gave it to you. She was fucking in the pumpkin patch, but Ogun was nasty. But anyway, he's checking his mama out, you know. So he like, all right, when my daddy get ready to go on the road, this time I'm going to feed the motherfucking Ajo bird. And that's Obatala's bird, the bird that tells him everything, lets him know what's going on. This is basically his second in command, if you will. This is the bird that Obatala trusts above everybody in this motherfucking story I just mentioned. He like, I don't care what nobody else say, this bird got my goddamn back. This bird going to tell me what happened. I can trust this motherfucking bird. A goon see that. He like, I'm a I'm a I'ma play on this nigga's sympathy. I'm a I'ma feed this nigga. Cause Abatala wasn't feeding him a whole lot. He just feed him just enough so that, you know, he's satisf satisfied. The bird actually wanted to be gorged and pig and eating a whole lot of food. Basically the bird wanted to get his big back on. So a goon like, I right, when my daddy leave, I'm going to take all of the food after my mama cooking and go lay down. Because bitch cook and go lay down. She'll never stay up and eat with us, spend no time with you. Because she didn't really want no boy children. She only wanted daughters, but for some reason she got two of them. But anyway, she going to lay her ass down. I ain't spend no time with the niggas. Ogun take all of the food, feed it to the bird, and tell the bird, eat all of it. This all yours. Don't worry about nothing. And she was sitting back with his motherfucking bowl like, yo, nigga, I don't get even a morsel of this shit. So Ogun tell him, yeah, I'm going to give you a little bit. You know, he give him just a little bit and sit him outside the front door, lock the door. Tell him, sit there and don't say nothing. He tell the bird, don't tell my daddy that I'm sitting this bird, sitting my little brother outside. So he set that shoe outside and... He go in the room and he smash his mom's. At first she was rejecting him, but she feel like about the lot and got to be an old man and his dick ain't getting as hard. I might as well do this. Now, this was before about the lot made it the most vile thing you can do to your family. You know, I was looking for some proper words, but all I can say that cousin fucking hunching stupid ass nasty shit y'all doing Abatala frowns on that heavily, okay? This is before he outlawed this shit. So, every time his daddy go and come from this house, you know, this nigga and his mama is screwing like they boyfriend and girlfriend and shit. Abatala get back. She fake it a little bit with him. He, he kind of wondering something ain't right about this bitch. This bitch ain't, this bitch done forgot that I done created humans. So, something ain't right. So, he started getting a sneaking suspicion that she was fucking around with somebody. But he didn't directly think it was his son because, you know, in his mind, even before he outlawed the motherfucking incestuous, nasty ass shit, he's assuming, yo, y'all know better than this. I'm about to lie. You know better than to pull some nasty shit like this. So he go on doing his thing. Taking his trips, working, you know. He slows up going all the way out of town, though. So he's doing trips that he can go and return really quickly, you know. He's asking his bird, yo, what's going on? You know, my wife kind of, you know, something's different about her. Have you heard something? Have you seen a nigga sneaking in and out of the house? And this motherfucking two-faced snake-ass bird, he telling half-truths. He motherfucking, well, first of all, Ogun always found himself lurking in the shadow. So the bird was scared of Ogun. He knew that Ogun would kill his ass if he told him, yo, um... Motherfucking your, your older son and fucking your bitch, you know, beating this bitch back down while giving me all the food in the house to eat. But he it didn't get that far. The bird motherfucking telling lies. He like, nope, nothing ain't changed. Everything is everything. She just go to bed after she cook. He leaving out the part where over uh, a goon go in the room and, and, and beating. Ugh. They, he go in the room and she laying up with her own motherfucking son. He ain't le he leaving this out because his fat ass is eating more food. So after a while, Bothell, I start noticing that this bird is getting fatter and as she was getting real, real skinny. 
So he play like he going out of town. He ain't tell the motherfucking bird because by now he done figured all oh, this bitch ass bird lying to me. I'm going to cook your ass tonight, nigga. But I got you. So Bartola play like he going out of town, do his same song and dance, his same routine, to have a conversation with his sons, you know, go fuck on his bitch, tell her he about to dip, tell the bird he about to dip, hold it down, put a little bit of food in his bowl, and he left. Only thing is, Abatala didn't leave. He basically, if we think in modern day times, this nigga just went and checked in at the motherfucking Motel 6 overnight and went and rented a car and pulled back up on this bitch and went and watched what was going on. So he come back to the house after a while. He step out, or or he just peeping. He in the bushes basically watching. So he see a goon sit or eschew sh- outside. Then he cre- he crept around to the other side so he could see up in his other side of his windows. And he see Ogun feeding the bird all of the motherfucking food. And he said, oh, this how come my son so motherfucking skinny? Oh, all right, this nigga giving this nigga all the food. So he was getting mad about that, but he like, fuck it, I can feed my son again. But I need to find out why this nigga ain't feeding my son and why he done set him outside so he get out the bushes and he walked back up on Eshu and he like well he waited about like 20 minutes and then he come out the bushes walk back up on Eshu Eshu like daddy I'm glad you here look they not feed me like Eshu start telling because this nigga getting sick because he's my fucking iron low and shit because he ain't eating and shit so about to lie like all right be quiet be quiet I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you I'm going to feed you, but let me go in here and make sure that this is right. So he feed, he said, bring Eshu in the house, sit him at the table, give him a little grub or whatever is left in the refrigerator because remember, Ogun and fed this fucking bird all of the motherfucking food. How about Abatala walk up in his motherfucking house and catch these two nasty animals in the motherfucking act, honey? And I'm talking about, had he had a spear, I'm sure he would have stabbed him. No. Obatala owns the well he doesn't own the knife. Well he does own a knife, excuse me. I'm sure he was gonna he would have stabbed now. But they saw him come in and Abatala's wife tried to claim rape immediately, but he knew better because Eshu had told him everything that had went on. See, Ogun thought that Eshu didn't hear him while he was outside or hear what was going on, but he found out. You know, Eshu gonna sleep and sneak and slide around and find shit out. But he put Ogun out of the house or and, and he fucking killed his fucking wife and killed the fucking bird. He like, nah, this shit ain't gonna happen. So from that day forward, Abatala outlawed incest. And that's why your nasty ass is filthy if that's the shit that you doing. Alright, y'all. Forgot to add, that's also the reason why Eshu is always venerated first. So that's the reason why you must acknowledge him before any other Orisha.